Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on mathematical induction. And what I'm going to look at in this video is how we go about proving the nth term from a recurrence relationship. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with recurrence relationships. If not, you can always check this out on my website. So I've got an example then here. Let's just run through it. We're given that the first term in a sequence, u1, is equal to 8. And the n plus 1th term is given by un plus 1 equals 4 times the nth term for un minus 9n. And we've got to prove that the nth term then is equal to 4 to the power n plus 3n plus 1. So how do we go about proving something like this? Well, if we're using mathematical induction, then just as a brief outline, we've got to show that it's true for when n equals 1. And then we assume that it's true for n equals some positive integer, say k. And on that assumption, go on to prove that it would be true for n equals k plus 1. And if that's the case, then we know that it's true for n equals 1, so it must be true for n equals 2. And if true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3 and 4 and so on. In other words, for all positive integers n. So that's the background to induction. So we now look at the proof. So we start by when n equals 1. And when n equals 1, the first term, okay, we just substitute this into here, okay, let's just call this 1, okay, so we can identify it. We substitute n equals 1 into here and we find that we get u1. u1 would equal 4 to the power 1, 4 to the power 1, plus 3 times 1, plus 1. 3 times 1 plus 1. Always a good idea just to show the working there so that someone knows where you're going to. And what does this turn out to be? Well, we've got 4 plus 3, which is 7, plus another one, which is 8. And we can see that this agrees with what we've got here. So therefore, it is true for n equals 1. OK, so we've got past that stage. Now we go on to the next stage where we assume that this is true for n equals k. Assume true when n equals k. In other words, we just write that down, that we're looking at u to the uk, the kth term here, OK? So therefore, we've got uk, the kth term, equals 4 to the power k plus 3k plus 1. So we'll just write that in. 4 to the power k plus 3k and then plus 1. So on that assumption, we've now got to check out what the k plus 1th term is going to be. So we've got uk plus 1 is going to equal, well, we know from this relationship, which we're given, okay, that if we let n equal k, we've got uk plus 1 equals 4 uk minus 9k. So just write that one in. 4 uk, the, the kth term, minus 9 times k. Now what does this equal? Well, we've got 4 times uk, the kth term. And we can work on this assumption that the kth term was 4 to the power k plus 3k plus 1. So if we just put that in brackets, we've got 4 to the power k plus 3k plus 1. And then we've got the last term here, minus 9k. So we need to expand this out. So we've got 4 times 4 to the power k. So we can add the powers here. So we've got 4 to the power k plus 1, or 1 plus k. Obviously makes no difference there. And then we've got 4 times 3k, so that's going to be plus 12k. 
And then we've got 4 times the 1, so that's going to be plus 4. And then we've got minus 9k. Okay, so we've got that far. Let's just come down here. And so now we're looking to find that k plus 1th term then. So we just copy that back in, u k plus 1 equals. Now, what I'm trying to get is u k plus 1 equals 4 to the power k plus 1 plus 3 lots of k plus 1 plus 1. And you can see I'm starting to get there because I've got 4 to the power k plus 1. That's a good start, all right? So let's just put that in. We've got 4 to the power k plus 1. And then we can tidy this up. We've got 12k minus 9k. Well, that's going to give us plus 3k. And then we've got the plus 4 on the end. But as I said earlier, we've got 4 to the power k plus 1. We really want 3 bracket k plus 1 here. So I can adapt this, okay? I can see where this is going. Let's just put that as 4 to the power k plus 1. And then we'll write plus. Now, we've got 3k. And I can take this 4 and I can split that into 3 plus 1. Because can you see that I can now factorize the next two terms? I can pull out a 3, so we've got 3 bracket k plus 1, and then I've got the plus 1 on the end. I kind of forced this situation just by looking at what I had to prove when n was equal to k plus 1. So it kind of guided me in. Okay, so. We've got then that we can see that, therefore, if true for n equals some positive integer, say k, then we've just proved that it is true for n equals k plus 1. All right? Now, in the usual way, since we know that it's true for n equals 1, we proved that in the first part up here, then it therefore must be true for n equals 2, because we proved that it's true for n equals k and then the next one up. So it must be true for n equals 2, and if true for n equals 2, it'll be true for n equals 3 and 4 and so on. So therefore, it must be true for all positive integers. Okay, n is a member of the positive integer set. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then how to go about doing recurrence relationship type questions. I've got another example in this series that you might like to look at, which is just a bit more involved than this one. But essentially, anyway, it still follows much the same kind of uh, idea. OK, well, I hope that's, as I say, been of use. And uh, I always appreciate any support that you give me. And uh, that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial.